Okay, hi everybody. I'm going to try to do these videos as quickly as humanly possible. It is awfully late, and this one at least is nothing but review. So, ratios and proportions. What we are going to do is we are going to review what you have known since seventh grade, and we're going to do it very, very quickly. Um, we're going towards sim similar figures, okay? We, we did a little bit of that in middle school, but um, similar figures are figures that have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. And in order to talk about these things and to do it more complicated than we did in middle school, we're going to need to revisit ratios. Remember, a ratio is a comparison between two quantities. Um, Uh, a ratio is a comparison between two quantities, A and B, where B is not equal to zero. So often we'll write ratios A over B. B can't be zero because you can't divide by zero. Because A divided by zero doesn't mean anything. Okay? So what we're going to do is um, we're going to talk about ratios being expressed in three ways. A ratio can be expressed as A to B a colon b, which is also read a to b, or a divided by b, or a over b. Those are the three ways that we talk about ratios. Now let's see what some of these, uh, some of the things can do. So, simplify the ratio. 16m over 40m. Okay? All we're going to do is uh, find our common factors, divide them out. 16 and 40, they both have a 4 in common, so I can divide by 4, divide by 4, I get 4, over 10, but wait, I haven't gotten everything yet because those still have something in common. Those still have a 2, and so I can go all the way down to 2m over 5m, but we're still not even done because 2m divided by 5m is just 2 to 5. So the ratio of 16m to 40m can be simplified down to 2 to 5. Okay? Let's move on. Simplify the ratio. It does get a little bit more complicated, as we have talked about earlier in the year, when you don't have the same units. So what you need to do is you need to change one of these or more to the proper units. It will be easier to change feet to inches. So you know 2 feet over 9 inches is 24, or 2 times 12, which is 24 inches over 9 inches. And then that one we can simplify. We see, hey, each of these has a 3 in common. So I'll divide out a 3. I get 8 inches over 3 inches. And then once again, I can simplify this ratio down more to 8 to 3. Okay, so the ratio of 2 feet to 9 inches can be simplified to down to 8 to 3. Okay, so I'm going to leave several questions for you to do. Uh, remember here, uh, number two, days, or I'm sorry, weeks is talking about weeks of the, like, the calendar, not weeks of school. So remember seven days, not five. Okay? Several questions for you to work on. And then we're going to talk about proportions, once again, from middle school. Okay? We know that a proportion is a statement that, that says two ratios are equal. So if we have one ratio here, and one ratio over here, then what makes the proportion is this guy in the middle saying, hey, these two ratios are equal to each other. Okay? And once again, your cross products, which you've known about forever. If A over B equals C over D, then you know CB or BC is equal to AD, just like we've written over here. Your cross products must be equal to each other. Okay? Let's move on. So, we're going to do this example, solve for y. 3 over 4 equals y over 12. Well, first thing we're going to do is cross products. We get 3 times 12, which is 46, gives me 4y. So I can divide both sides by 4. I get that 9 equals y, and I'm done. Like I said, we're moving quickly. Okay, let's try this one. This one's just a tiny bit more complicated. We're still going to solve by cross products. But now I have 10 times y plus 5 equals 4 times 4y plus 2. And now I can at least pretend I'm doing a little bit of algebra. Use my distributive property. I get 10y plus 50 equals 16y plus 8. I will combine uh, my terms to their respective sides, minus 10y 
minus 10y, and then take away 8, take away 8, and I am left with 42 equals 6y, divide both sides by 6, divide both six sides by 6, and I get that y equals 7. Okay? Good. Excellent. Moving on. One for you to try, one for you to try, and there's a few properties that you might never have known about as far as ratios go. Here they are. First one I'm pretty sure you know about. All we're doing is flipping our, um, our ratios. So if A over B, sorry, if A over B equals C over D, then if I flip these guys, I get that B over A equals D over C. Okay, no big deal. You can just, the top becomes the bottom, the bottom becomes the top, and it's still, the proportion is still true because look at your cross products. Your cross products are what tell you everything you need to know about, um, about proportions. BC has to equal AD. Well, BC has to equal AD. Those cross products are still the same cross products, so you know this is equal. Okay? Okay, the next one. We start with our original one, and what we've done now is we've left the extremes here. The A and D are called extremes because they're on the top and the bottom, uh, on, on the outsides. And then the ones in the middle here, B and C, all we're going to do is switch them. So we have A over C equals B over D. But notice again, your cross products are still the same. A times D is still equal to B times C, just like they were in our original uh, proportion. A times D is still equal to B times C, so you know this is still true. And then this last one is a little bit mm, iffy. I'm sure you've never seen this one before. A over B, if A over B equals C over D, then what you can do is you can just add the denominator in, plus B, plus D, and you get A plus B over B equals C plus D over D, and it turns out that this is true, and I bet you the reason why is because of cross products. Let's figure out what happens when we do cross products. A plus B times D should equal B times C plus D. Well, I'm going to use my distributive property. I get DA plus DB is equal to BC plus BD. Well, let me subtract BD from both sides. BD and DB are the same thing, so those get crossed out. And what do you know? I still have the same cross products that I had. DA is equal to BC, and so this is why this one is also true. I'm going to give you a couple of, well, let's do one together and then a couple of ways to practice this. Okay? Tell whether the statement is true or false. If R over 3 equals Q over 6, then R over Q equals 1 over 2. Well, let's go through it. This is true. Spoiler alert. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start here. R over 3 equals Q over 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip our middle terms. So it, now we have R over Q equals 3 over 6. From there, it's not too hard to see that 3 over 6 is just 1 half, which, what do you know, is exactly what we were trying to show. So we've got that it is true. I think we've got one more here. Okay. Tell whether the statement is true or false. If r over 3 equals q over 6, then 3 over r equals 6 over q. Well, this is real simple. All we're doing is flipping these top and bottom, flipping these top and bottom to get this. That is true because that was one of our properties we talked about two slides ago. Okay? Let's tell whether this statement is true or false. If r over 3 equals q over 6, then this whole thing. Well, we know that we can just add our denominator to our numerator. r plus 3 over 3 should equal q plus 6 over 3. Well, this part is exactly what they've written here. But q plus 6 over 6? It's not what they wrote there. They wrote q plus 3. So this is not going to be true. False. 
because it should be q plus 6 over 6. Okay, let's try this one. Um, if p over q equals 7 over 10, then q over p equals, then p over 7 equals, and then p plus q over q equals. These are for you to do. Okay, as is that, and probably the rest of the slides. Uh, no, we've got... Yes, okay. So I left, I left two of the word problems in. Um, we will do one together, and then the other one is going to be for you. James, Michelle, and Angela have $50 in a ratio of 2 to 5 to 3, respectively. How much money do they each have? Okay. First thing we're going to do, we say, hey, James's amount plus Michelle's amount plus Angela's amount equals 50. So they are in a ratio, so that means when you're doing algebra, just add in the same variable. 2x plus 5x plus 3x must equal 50. We figure out how much x is for each one, and then multiply it out. Okay? We find out that x is 5, so Jamie's amount, which was 2x, must equal 2 times 5, or 10 bucks. Michelle's amount, which was 5x, is 5 times 5, or 25. And Angela's amount, which was 3x, is 3 times 5, or 15. Everything else is for you to do. That is the end of my video. And I am done.